Hello and welcome to a new chapter in RC Servo innovation. Every so often, a product comes along that's so groundbreaking, it shifts the entire industry. The result of three years of focused research, development, and relentless testing, Eon Servo technology is set to redefine what a top-tier RC servo should be. To truly appreciate why, it's best to begin with the device that unlocks all this cutting-edge technology, Eon's new servo programmer. So let's dive in. This is the new servo programmer from Aeon. It was designed to program the new Aeon servos. It comes in a nice case with legs in the back and several ports. First, remove the cover to reveal the screen. This unit has a boot button and a reset button. These buttons are used to restart the program and the boot button is used in case the unit becomes bricked. You can use the USB port to reload the factory software. That shouldn't be a problem because this unit comes with a Wi-Fi system so you can log into the website and get updates for the firmware of this unit. Here's where the servo connects and here's where the receiver connects. Here's a warning label. Make sure you pay attention to the label. This is powered by the receiver. The unit doesn't need external power. We are using the USB port here to demonstrate. There are several tabs for this software. Open the info tab so you can access your servo. The first thing that you need to do is connect the servo by clicking on the connect to server button. Once it connects to the servo, you will see that the read servo button will light up. If you click on the read servo, it will get all the information out of the servo so that you can review things like protocol, pulse width, center offset, travel angle, angle limits, and other settings. The centering tab is used for centering the servo, and you can adjust around this circle or here. It comes with a built-in oscilloscope, so you can see the signal coming from the receiver. It has a mechanical zero button, a pass-through button, meaning it connects the receiver to the servo as if there was no programming unit in between them. You have a restart button to restart the servo itself. There are two servo zero buttons because the servo zero is the virtual zero of the servo you are going to program and the mechanical zero puts the servo arm exactly at the mechanical zero of the servo. Here you have the number of what we call ticks. These ticks are sent to the servo to set the center of the offset. There are over 16,000 ticks, so you have a total resolution of 45.5 ticks per degree, which is an unhear number for a servo. That gives you 0.021 degrees of resolution. On the top, you have a bind indicator with hysteresis for use when doing offset adjustments, like hitting the end of an RC car or RC airplane engine carburetor travel, or a helicopter tail servo pushrod adjustment. These servos make no noise when binding, so the bind indicator will let you know. This is the live switch. This allows you to see the servo moving while it's being adjusted. You can monitor the servo centering offset result while the servo is being programmed by moving the sticks of your radio. Look at the oscilloscope changing the pulse width and how it's transmitted to the servo movement for monitoring live. Let's use the spin wheel. Select the digits to change in the direction via plus or minus. First, we are going to select the hundreds digit location. By the way, this circle is over 16,000 ticks. So we are going to click on minus to move in the correct direction. Now let's go slower selecting the tenths digit. Four hundred forty is the actual center. The PROG tab allows you to access and program these parameters. Vehicle type, name, description, reverse mode, soft start speed, soft start timeout, protocol, min pulse width, max pulse width, center pulse width, min angle limit, max angle limit, travel angle, center offset, dead band in NS, max amps, overload sex, agility, nominal torque, damping, max speed, and centering torque. The protocol drop-down menu is one of the most amazing things about this servo. This servo can handle pretty much anything on the market. 1,520 microseconds, 1,500, 1,000 microseconds, and others. Here you have 760 microseconds, which is the one that's used often for fast servos. 
But if you want to use some crazy even faster, it will be able to handle it without a problem. Here's 125 microseconds. It's ready for that speed. The servo is able to listen to it and, and respond. As a matter of fact, the resolution of this servo when reading protocols is an incredible 12.5 nanoseconds. That means it can handle protocols that haven't been created yet. And because it's software upgradable via the programmer, all new protocols become available for the servo. We predict that with the advent of the servo, the radio manufacturers will be forced to step up and start using modern digital high-speed protocols. By the way, if you're wondering why we don't list the number of hertz like in 700 and 6333 hertz, it's because this servo is able to handle any update rate frequency. High frequencies like 2000 hertz and even 9000, 18000 and 36000 hertz update rates on the D-Shot protocols. It doesn't matter what you throw at it. Then you have here Xbus from Genyar, Sbus from Futaba, and all the fast D-Shot protocols. D-Shot 150, 300, 600, 1200, and Multi-Shot, which is even faster. All of these things are protocols available in this new servo. As an example of using the Prog tab, let's adjust the travel angle. As you can see, the current travel angle is 90 degrees. What we wanna do is increase the travel angle. We're going to make it a 150 degree servo, almost 150. We give a touch here to go 150. We click here to store settings. The servo stored the settings and it's all fine. Let's adjust the trimmer to 1,500 microseconds to its centered. We will see how much travel we have now. If you look at the arm, you can see it's almost 180 degrees. Let's now demonstrate selecting a D-Shot protocol from the Prog tab. As you can see, it's reading D-Shot, a digital signal protocol. Look at the update speed. It is an incredible 9,375 Hertz. The pulse width that is being measured is the actual pulse width of the first of the D-Shot pulses. It reads two microseconds. That will allow you to verify that the protocol is being sent correctly. Let's now plug the servo into the receiver so we can see it move. As you can see, the speed is incredible. Keep in mind that this insane speed is also at 33 kilograms of torque. These servos are so powerful and fast that you no longer need specialized servos. For instance, RC helicopters don't need a specialized tail servo anymore. These servos can be used in cyclics, tail, rudder, aileron, elevator, flaps, RC car steering, and pretty much anything you want because these servo have the specs required. This is definitely not a normal servo. There's simply nothing like this and has never been a servo like this on the market. This is the update tab. At this tab, you can log into the Aon website and store the settings and information for all your Aon devices. You just have to click on the login and it will connect you to the Aon cloud server and either upload or download as needed. You will have a private account that keeps track of your devices and stores their information. You can use it to copy settings from one device to another and other features. Thank you for watching our product introduction video. For more information, visit eonrc.com. The first production batch is very limited and expected to arrive within 30 to 60 days. Pre-order now at eonrc.com or xguardrc.com. For dealer inquiries, please send an email to info at eonrc.com. This video was designed to be brief, so it doesn't cover everything in detail. In the coming days, we'll be posting additional videos, including full setup guides, and an in-depth look at the advanced hardware inside the servo. Until then, we hope you continue enjoying the hobby.